What's going on, it's R2 here, and uh, have I got some fucking movies to show you, and some shit that I got over this past month. Um, whew, there's a lot, no drinks this time, we're just going to get straight into it. Uh, yeah, first off, got this. This is um, AFL. <laughs> yep, that's it. <laughs> um, I go for Joel and Katz, they're an AFL team here in Australia. If you don't know what AFL is, it's just our national sports, our national... Um, it's football, it's our Australian football. Anyway, this is just a collection of um, games that Geelong have played over from 1991 to 2013, just a selection of their, I think six, yeah, just six of their games that they just demolished the opposition. So I like this stuff. I like to go back and rewatch some of their old games, especially the ones we win. And it was only $12, like it was normally 35, I wanna say. So that's pretty good, 12 bucks, nice little box set. They each come in these individual uh, cases. The only problem is on the back they show the score, so I'm trying not to look at the back. But yeah, so this that's cool. I've got a few of these on my little shelf over there and they have um, classics, uh, like a classic set. So it's like John Cat's classics uh, one and two. So there's another 12 games essentially on DVD that I've got to find and pick up. But that was cool. I just did a JB Hi-Fi and this was $12, so I thought, fuck it, I'm gonna get it. Um, we're going to start off with some HD DVDs because I fucking love HD DVD. You know, HD DVD is the superior format over Blu-ray like Betamax is over VHS. So if you know, you know. Um, but I've got a player. The player is region free. Um, I don't know if that's the case with all HD DVD players, but my HD DVD player is region free. Um, so it doesn't matter what region I get these movies from. And these are all... Region uh, America, region America, <laughs> whatever the American regions are. I don't know if they do like region one or whatever for different different uh, different countries for HD DVDs. Never actually looked into it. But anyway, I got a stack. I got a massive stack of about I don't know fifty odd, and it cost me like thirty eight dollars or something like that. So HD DVDs are fucking cheap. So if there's certain movies that I just don't want to spend the money on for Blu-ray, I'm gonna pick it up on HD DVD because the format is unreal. The quality is great. Has an awesome little grain to it, like a HD DVD grain to it that I really like. So if you can get a hold of a player and get a hold of some movies, they're fucking cheap. I was spewing because I went to the football and I knew that there was an auction ending for 116 HD DVDs. And I was going to place a bid on it. I was going to go up to $150 because that's only still uh, like a couple of dollars per movie. The auction ended at $56 for... Um, 116 of these movies and there were some fucking good ones in there but anyway Geelong won that day so it's fine I think <laughs> but I got um, out of the big lot that I want that I got these are the only ones that I, I got the lot for so even $30 for this lot is still pretty pretty good in my opinion um, but I got the Jim Hen uh, Jimi Hendrix uh, experience live at uh, Monterey um, I've been listening to a lot of Jimi Hendrix lately just for some reason just it came on randomly the song came on my phone I was like, wow, this is really good. I mean, just really digging his music. Always have, but just at the moment, I mean, just getting back into it. So I got this concert. I haven't checked it out yet, but I'm sure it's going to be awesome. It comes with a little cool little booklet. So I had a little flick through. Just tells a bit about history and stuff like that. But yeah, it's really cool. So I got that one. Uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I don't have this in any other way and uh, on any other sort of format. So now I've got it on HD or DVD. And there we go, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Again, I don't own this on any other format, so I've got it on uh, HD DVD now, so that will do. Casablanca, this movie is so good. I watched this for the first time um, last year during COVID, uh, on, just on DVD, and the DVD looked fantastic. So this was in there, stoked, gonna watch this again really soon. I could watch this movie over and over. It is almost the perfect movie. It's just unreal. Love this movie a lot. So I, I hear from a reliable source that it could be coming out on, on 4K, which I will be getting as well. Uh, Forbidden Planet, this is awesome. This is really cool. Again, I don't own it, now I do. Discs are cool. Full artwork on the discs. You don't get that in like a movies anymore. It's just like, just the name. So that's cool. I know they're not all like that, but. Uh, and I can tell these are from another country as well because they're the thin spines. So the, normally they they are a bit thicker. I don't have a thick one to show you, but it's just a normal sort of thickness. 
Uh, we got Adam Sandler in Happy Gilmore. I love this movie. Not my favorite Happy Gilmore. F uh, not my favorite Adam Sandler movie, but it's fucking right up there. I don't know. Maybe maybe it is my favorite. Oh no, Wedding Singer. I love the Wedding Singer. Yeah, um, this would be second favorite for sure. But again, didn't own it, and to get it in on a HD format, that's awesome. Uh, I haven't checked it out yet though, so I need to very very soon. And then this one is awesome. It's a cool little, um, I guess, digi book or media book. I don't know what they call this format. I guess it's a digi book, I think. Um, but it's Bonnie and Clyde, Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway. Uh, I've wanted to see this for a long time. I've heard about it. It's got a cool little book. But um, I think this is Warren Beatty. Is he Dick Tracy? I don't know. I might be confused. Uh, but this is from 1967, so I've yeah heard about this. Uh, obviously, know the characters, and you know what happens at the end. But I'm just I've never seen an iteration like a film iteration of these characters before. So uh, I hear this one's really really good. So I'm sure that one because it's Warner Brothers. I'm it's probably out on like Warner Archive or something like that. But yeah, they only cost me like a couple of dollars each. Um, some DVDs, I guess. A couple of Blu-rays. It's just sort of miscellaneous stuff. Charlie Chalk. <laughs> this is a dollar. Um, had to get it. It's in one of these shitty cases. I, I've got a couple of like kid stuff with these cases in there, but the disc is perfect. I've never seen this um, this version before from this sort of series. There's a lot of uh, like you get Postman Pat and Fireman Sam and and Titch and um, yeah Thomas and all those other little kid shows and Brum even I think as well but I've never seen a Charlie Chalk one so when I got it I had to when I saw it I had to get it, it was just this was uh, a big part of my childhood and I'm pretty sure 89 yeah I thought I was gonna say late 80s early 90s but yeah 1989 this came out and if you know what this is you, you know it's worth picking up it's just absolutely unreal it's just cool little stop motion sort of claymation uh sort of style and yeah it's just charlie chalk it's got an awesome intro go and check out the intro if i could be bothered i'll link the intro in the description box below but let's be honest i probably won't um i'll put them back here so I picked up this because I watched uh, Treasure Planet recently and it sort of got me thinking about Titan AE. Um, this hasn't got a Blu-ray release, I don't think anywhere. It definitely doesn't have one here in Australia, so this is the uh, the best way to see it. I found this at an op shop for, or possibly cash converters for like a dollar, so I had to get it. I don't think it's super rare or, or super expensive, but uh, I think a dollar is a fucking good price for it, so pick that up. I really like this movie. I remember... When it first came out, I think it was a bit overhyped and didn't do too well because we didn't get many of these. Uh, a lot of uh, money went into this film and I just don't think it, it did too well. But I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. It needs a Blu-ray release. I'd love to see that in HD. Uh, this was a dollar. Season 3 of Real Monsters or Are Real Monsters. It's just, this is the Nickelodeon that I grew up with, so I had to get it. Um, it's just a shame that it's season three, but for a dollar, I, I mean, I give a fuck. It'll go next to my Rocco's Modern Life and my, I think I had Rugrats somewhere, but I might've got rid of it, but yeah, that's cool. Uh, I picked these up at a bundle. They were like $2 each or $3 each. Um, uh, we got John Safran's Music Jamboree and John Safran versus God. John Safran was, was, uh, a thing in, I want to say early 2000s, maybe 2001. Two or 2003 or something oh and this is an umbrella entertainment as well didn't even realize it's not going to go on my umbrella release um section well maybe i will yeah i don't know he was kind of a thing in um yeah i want to say early 2000s maybe 2003 2004 he just did like i don't know it's like a documentary sort of thing or he just goes talks about a bit about his past and how he tried to release a song and then um, does like every episode's on a different style of genre of music or some shit. I'm not exactly sure, but it's pretty entertaining. It's pretty funny. There's some skits in there. It's just something that was, you know, big in the in yeah mid 2000s maybe here in Australia. Yeah, 
And then he followed up. This one was good. This was really good. I remember this was interesting. Um, then he followed up with John Saffron versus God, where he talks about um, all these different religions and he goes around, I think he goes around the world and sort of like investigates all these different religions. The last episode, he does uh, uh, like an exorcism and he's like, it's exercised, <laughs> which is just a, it's just a crock of shit. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. Like it's pretty shocking in some parts as well. Like he actually gets nailed to a cross. Like they physically nail him to a cross. I'm pretty sure they do that to him. I know he tries it, like attempts it. Uh, he goes to these monks and they fucking bamboo whip him and stuff like that because he can't answer uh, like these weird um, sort of uh, spiritual questions or some shit. So yeah, they're they're pretty good. If you if you see him out there, like definitely check him out. I don't know how um, available these are outside of Australia, but if you're in Australia and you you know you grew up what, during the time that I was grew up, you, you would know what these are. Um, yeah, and they're good for a little bit. I wouldn't pay too much for them. Um, I went out. I don't know why I got this. <laughs> it was five dollars um, because you probably just download it. But uh, it just was so funny to me. A friend of mine and I went um, op shopping, and this was in the op shop for five dollars or five or six dollars. And it's Beauty and the Beast TV series. It has Linda Hamilton in it from Terminator. And Ron Perlman is the Beast. Like, this is a 90s TV series. Oh, fuck. No, it's 87. So, 87, 88 TV series. Six discs. Nothing too crazy there, but it must be 26 episodes or something. Um, this originally came out from Shock Entertainment, so that's pretty cool. But that's... It, this is just so funny to me. I didn't even know this was a thing. I knew they had, like, a live-action movie or a miniseries or something back in the 90s, but maybe I'm thinking of this. But, I don't know, I, w I just got to check it out just to have a bit of a laugh, but it's set in, like, modern day for the, of the times, like, it uh, just, it was just really funny to me, so I picked it up. <laughs> um, been going through a bit of a, a British comedy uh, sort of phase, I guess, and showing my housemate some, some crazy British comedy. We just watched uh, all the Black Books. Uh, I showed her some Trigger Happy TV. We're gonna, I'm gonna show her some other stuff, including because she's never seen it all. So I'm just, it's fun to have some dinner when we eat meals at the same time and watch some some uh, British comedy. I got the Inbetweeners uh, complete box set. This is only like thirteen dollars or something like that off, off eBay. Um, proper like Australian release, which is cool. Uh, just the DVD because it doesn't matter. Uh, but this is all three seasons, so. Keen to show that because she's never seen it. In for a rude awakening. Uh, so I had to get the movies as well. So I got, um, I got found these from the pawn shop. They were like five dollars each. It might have been four dollars and, and five dollars. I knew these were these are always at the cash converters that I go to. So I knew that they would be there, and I went there specifically for these, and they were there. So, <laughs> but yeah, in between is one and two on Blu-ray. The movie. Um, this one has a digital copy, but it's on a disc. So I never understood that. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, that's cool. This show is so good. I can't just watch an episode or two. If I just put this on, I watch all 18 episodes straight. It's fucking unreal. It's so good. Um, in keeping with that theme, I got the Office complete box set. This was $10 from, a, I think, an op shop or something, like maybe Savers. Uh, this is complete series one and two in the Christmas specials. This when this first came out, I was obsessed, fully obsessed with this show. It just was so awkward to watch in some parts, and just absolutely hilarious. Like a lot of other people, this was uh, my introduction to Ricky Gervais, and I am so glad that that person exists. That guy exists. He is an absolute comedy genius. I don't care if if he upsets people with his comedy. Uh, I'm glad it exists, and this show is absolutely amazing. Fuck any other iteration of The Office, including the American one. Fuck that show to the moon. Um, thanks, Isaac, for that. <laughs> but this is amazing. Get this on. Uh, I got this because I had the VHS and really, really wanted to watch it. And I just never got around to watching the tape and got rid of the tape. So now I've got the DVD. This was like 2 or $3 from an off shop. Carry On Screaming. Part of that Carry On series, which is just a comedy sort of British spoof type films that came out sort of very slapstick comedy of the time in the 70s this one came out in 66 so and i think the majority of them came out 
you know, late sixties, early seventies, and maybe a couple in the eighties and maybe a couple in the nineties. But, um, this is the one that I've never seen before. didn't even know it existed until I found the tape and just one I've been wanting to watch for the longest time. Cause I think it's, it's just, um, it'll be just hilarious. Like it'll be just a typical comedy, um, with horror elements in it, but just slapstick carry on hilariousness with horror in it. <laughs> So, yeah, looking forward to checking that one out. Um, <laughs> I got a couple of these from the off shop because I want to start getting them. I don't know if I'm ever going to get around to watching these, but if I see them for a couple of bucks, I'm going to pick them up because I have watched a few from these series and they're really good. I'm trying to get to some like some cinema classics or some gold cinema, you know, gold, what's it like called? Hollywood gold. It's in the title of these series. <laughs> So I got the Hollywood Gold series, Attack on the Iron Coast. Now, I've said before, um, I'm not a huge war person. Like, I don't really enjoy war films. And I'm trying to rectify that. I'm trying to watch more and more different types of war films. Uh, anything in this series, I think, is going to be worth a watch. Because they don't... Uh, I think that, you know, they're going to put decent movies. Or at least movies you should check out at least once in this range. So I got this one. I said, it was only two bucks. So even if I don't ever watch it, I'm... I'm you know, at least I have it there if I want to. <laughs> yeah, so it just looks like some sort of a war film. Lloyd Bridges. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be good. I'm sure it'll be all right. Uh, and then this one looks really good, actually. Uh, this has got Charlton Heston, the worst best actor or something, best worst actor. Uh, the Hawaiians. Um, there was it, the, con the continuation of James A. Michaels or McInnes' epic novel. So just the... Looks really cool. Just looks really epic, sort of like um, scenery and stuff like that. Because a lot of this stuff, you know, was shot on site. And I just, this looks like a real cool adventure type film. Um, and yeah, I mean, Charlton Heston isn't too bad. He did make Planet of the Apes after all. So I got that one. I uh, found another one of these. This was $2, 2 or $3, I don't know. It's not the five action film. Uh, five movie action collection. Comes with Judges. Uh, Total Eclipse, uh, Urgency, Bare Knuckles, and Seal Team 6, Journey to Darkness. I don't know if that's because of the, the Seal Team is 6, or this is the 6th film in the pr franchise. I'm pretty sure that, I'm pretty sure they're Seal Team 6. I think, think that's the name, of, like the code name. But, uh, yeah, just little B-grade, dodgy action films that I love. So, haven't checked any of them out. I don't know when I'll ever get around to it, but at least it's there. Um, my good buddy Liam gifted me this because I haven't seen it yet and he really wants me to watch it. And I want to watch it because it's an Australian film that I hear is uh, just fucking awesome. And that's Cat Sick Blues. Uh, this is from Monster Pictures. Disc is... Oh, oh no, that's my license. I thought the disc was loose. <laughs> um, yeah, from Monster Pictures, which is a Australian distributor here in Australia. <laughs> and they released... Um, a few of these like types you know it goes like this and then it goes but yeah there's a few from this range that sort of look like this they've all got similar covers but yeah apparently this is really good strong horror violence and coarse language uh it's definitely one i've been meaning to check out for the longest time and i think i'm really really going to enjoy it both Liam and my taste in films are pretty similar so i think uh i think i'm going to like this one quite a lot so cat sick blues um yeah then I got these three. They were just a dollar. I was at Cash Converse. I think it was the day that I got one of the um, in between us films on Blu-ray because it was I didn't get them at the same time. But these were a dollar, and these are semi-new films, I guess. I I, I don't hundred percent know, <laughs> but they just looked interesting enough for me to pick up for a dollar. Um, Into the Grizzly Maze with uh, Thomas Jane James Marsden, Piper Pierbo <laughs> Pierbo. <laughs> Fuck that up. And Billy Bob Thornton. It's just a... This is like a killer bear film where they got to hunt this killer bear. Billy Bob gets fucked up though. Like his face is scratched as fuck on the front cover here. So this just looks really good. Strong horror, violence, blood and gore. Um, yeah, I mean for a dollar... I'm going to pick up any movie for a dollar that looks interesting. And just looks really cool. Action pack uh, adventure trying to get this fucking bear. So sick. Uh, this one, what was it? Ah, oh, The Devil's Candy. I, I don't know. It just sounded cool, and it looked interesting on the back, like a bit of a sort of, a bit funny, but not meant to be funny. 
Um, yeah, a heavy metal vision of hell. So, of course, I'm going to be interested in that. I love heavy metal. So, yeah, for a dollar, fuck it. Thought, why not? I don't know who's in it of any note. Uh, can't read this shit. Ethan Embry. She, Shivey? Shivey Appleby? Yeah, there's, there's nobody in there that I know of. But yeah, if you know what this is, let me know in the comments down below. Um, yeah. And lastly, I stopped getting these sort of movies because they just don't interest me anymore. Like, it's not my sort of horror film. But for a dollar, it's still a movie that you can buy in the shops. Like... At JB Hi-Fi, so the fuck it. I mean, it's only a ten dollar movie, but for a dollar, I got Ghost House. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'll ever watch it. The cover's pretty cool though. She's like spitting out a tree with a house in it. Never seen that before. Is she getting choked, or is that her arm? No, I think she's getting choked out as well, which is cool. Yeah, Ghost House. Such a generic title. I'm sure it's going to be utter trash. And again, there's nobody in here that I recognize. It does look kind of creepy on the back, though. They're like, there's some bitch, bitch here that looks pretty freaky. So it might be all right. And it goes for, I'll go for 96 minutes. I thought it went for a lot less. But it has strong horror themes and sex scenes. So cool. MA. So yeah, it might be all right. These supernatural horror type ones, they just don't really do it for me unless it's The Conjuring. Just because that was like one of the first sort of franchises I really got into. So a bit of a soft spot for it. And like Insidious as well. But, yeah, for a dollar. I'll give it a crack for a dollar. Uh, Alright, so. Can't show you what these are yet. Oh, no, okay. Alright, here we go. So these are just random, um, some random Blu-rays that I've just picked up. Just because. JB Hi-Fi's been having some fucking sales on, so I've just been going in there. I've been working in the city, and just walking past there every day, so. <laughs> just been going in, and just getting a couple of movies every day. Uh, got this one. Hundred Bloody Acres, Angus Simpson, Angus Sampson, and uh, Damon Harriman. I want to say this is an Australian film. Yeah, it is. Of course it is. Because Angus Sampson is Australian, but I know he does other stuff. He was in the fucking Mortal Kombat movie. This guy was Goro in Mortal Kombat. I thought Goro was a CG character. Because <laughs> he's a big dude as well. Angus Sampson's quite a big dude. So maybe he just stood in and had like a thing on or something. But Hundred Bloody Acres... Uh, MA for strong violence and coarse language, blood and gore. I've been wanting to check this out for a long time. I think they uh, they capture people and they they mince them up for their um, fertilizer or something on a big on a farm on an apple farm or something. I don't know, <laughs> maybe not an apple farm. Um, but I think it's like a it's like a comedy horror. Uh, but it's just something that I've always wanted to check out but never had the chance. So yeah, going to watch it very soon. Uh, one that I've had my eye on for the longest time in just a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, I've, it's been popping up on my Instagram a lot, uh, advertised on my Instagram a lot, and I'm like, yeah, this looks really cool. And that's The Reckoning. Um, this is from Eagle Entertainment, which is, again, an Australian release company. Like, they release movies here in Australia. Um, generally, I, I don't get a lot of their movies because they're, I don't know, they're maybe not the best films, but... This one sounds re uh, just looks really cool, um, and it's from the director of The Descent and Game of Thrones. So I thought I'd give this one a crack. Ma for strong themes, violence, and just a sex scene. So there's only one, just one. If there's two, I'm gonna take it back. But uh, this only just came out, so this is a 2021 film. Um, like it only just, I think it just got released like the last couple of weeks yeah, physically. So yeah, pick this up. I got offered a. A screener to watch but i was like it's already coming in the mail so <laughs> thanks but no thanks yeah keen to check that out at some point um maybe tonight maybe this was two bucks i i, I really just got this to maybe try and flip but i'll might check out a couple episodes of it again it's not really my type of horror anymore not that it freaks me out or anything it's just very hard to find it interesting um and that's uh south of hell from jason blum and eli roth I mean, it looks interesting. It's got a cool cover, and it just seems to be like a little bit of a... It's Charleston, South Carolina, is the most possessed city in the world. Evil thrives here. Um, 
So it's about exorcists and supernatural shit and vampires or some shit on there. So it might be alright. I don't know how many episodes it is. 334 minutes. a fucking lot. Oh, so it's only eight episodes. And I smashed through it pretty quick. But it was two dollars. So I'll get it. I get anything for, for a couple of bucks just to try out and see if it's any good. But yeah, it's south of hell. Might be right. Let me know in the comments section if you've seen it, if it's worth watching. It's only M. So I can't imagine it being too freaky. It has uh, horror themes, violence, sex scenes, and drug references. So, yeah. I don't know. Uh, this movie is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I fucking love this movie. I got it from the op shop for five dollars. Um, totally worth it. Happy to give them five dollars for this film. Um, Attack the Block. This is so good. The creature effects of this movie, like the aliens, because it's aliens, it's not a spoiler. Um, they unreal. Like they, I really like. That scared me. <laughs> Talking about aliens. Um, they're so black, like they're so dark. It's almost like the, the the color of these aliens. It sucks the light away out of anything, and they just they're really really black. And then then when they smile with their teeth, their teeth glow white. It's just it's really cool. Fucking love this movie. Pretty funny, pretty gory. It's a couple of cool cameos in there. It's got um, Nick Frost. Yeah, it says starring Nick Frost, but it's not. It doesn't really star him. But it's from the producers of Shaun of the Dead, so it's got a little bit of that sort of feel to it. But it's more, it's it's not as like a comedy like Shaun of the Dead is. It's more of a sort of like an alien horror type film. But it's really good. It's a little bit hard to understand in some parts because it's it's set in like a high rise apartment building in England. So it's very, um, they use very particular type of language. That, um, but you can get away with like watching it and sort of understanding it. So yeah, check this one out. If you haven't seen this one, definitely sort of, Try and find it and watch it. It's fucking unreal. Um, haven't seen it in the longest time. Yeah, due for a rewatch. Very good. Uh, I got this because it was four dollars, and there's four movies in here, and I, it kind of interests me. And for four dollars, I thought, fuck it, why not? That's the Purge collection, four movie collection on Blu-ray. Like four dollars, man. You got the Purge, the Purge Anarchy, Purge Election Year, and the first Purge. I don't know anything. Well, well, I know what they're the premises of this movie, but I've never seen anything of them. Like I've never watched any of them. Uh, it's just one of those franchises that sort of, sort of was it passed me by. Um, but it's good. It, it, it's I think it's good. <laughs> I don't know. I think the first one was really good. Uh, I've heard nothing but great things about the first movie and one of the other ones as well. I can't remember which one, but. Um, yeah, I'll check them out one day. Yeah, MA, 15, so that's pretty good. For $4 for like a movie, if it's no good, I'll just, I could probably flip it, you know. We'll just gift it on. I gift on a lot of stuff, I'll just gift it on. Maybe. <laughs> um, I got this because I thought I hadn't seen it, and it was $8. I'm like, ooh, I like these sort of like Indiana Jones type films, adventure type movies. And then when I took, like I got it home, and I was like, oh no, I have seen this one. It's not bad. It's nothing... You know, it's nothing um, nothing to write home about, but it's, it's you know, worth a watch. If you like your adventure type, you know, modern day treasure hunting type films, yeah, it's all good. It's only PG, so you know, nothing too crazy happens in it, but it's a cool story. Yeah, Treasure Guards. Um, yeah, I don't recognize any of the people in it, but I think I saw it. When did this come out? 2011. Oof, so 10 years, 10 years old. Yeah, I was gonna say I saw it a long time ago. So definitely worth. Uh, I might have to rewatch it at some point. But yeah, I like these sort of movies. So I had to get it. This is unreal. Robin Hood Men in Tights. I got this um, just because I don't have a copy of it, and I really wanted a copy of it. <laughs> and I watched it the other day. Fuck me, the humor is unreal. It doesn't hold up in terms of like. For the year it is now, like 2021, you can't offend anyone or you can't do anything without offending anyone. So there's always somebody out there that's going to get offended on behalf of somebody else. And this movie offends everyone. <laughs> and I love it. Uh, we need more movies like this. But we're not going to. Um, what's his name? Mel Brooks is probably not going to be able to do another movie ever again. Because if he does his style of comedy, it's not going <laughs> to... It's not going to be accepted, <laughs> which is a damn shame. But yeah, this is still funny to me. Everything about this movie is hilarious. Looks great. 
the um, I thought it wasn't going to look very good, but I think it looked fine. It looked really good. I, I don't know if I heard somewhere that the Blu-ray didn't look very good, but look good, look good. Um, oh, here we got some another random stack. <laughs> Fuck! I thought I, I thought I'd turn these ones. Nope. Um, a lot of these are still brand new, un unopened. I just haven't had a chance to watch any of these. I've watched a few, but uh, I got Miss Fisher. So, Franny Fisher and the Crypt of Tears. I like the character of Franny Fisher. She was uh, uh, like a... Is it in the 20s? She like solved crimes. Yeah, in the 20s. She solved like uh, like a detective. She was like a detective in the, in the 20s. How many times could I say 20s? Um, yeah, solving murders and getting people out of prison and stuff like that. That's awesome, like, you know, pu pua, perua, you know, that guy. <laughs> um, I think she's, I don't want to, I could be wrong, but she's either Australian, like it's, either, it's an Australian character or an English character. I want to say it's an Australian character because I saw a play uh, about Franny Fisher. I can't remember what the name of the play was or what the story was, but she was trying to solve a murder on a train. And I'm pretty sure it was set in Australia. So I want to say it's an Australian character. I'm not. I'm pr pretty new to this character in terms of uh, watching her stuff. And I haven't... So new, in fact, that like, I haven't watched any of this stuff yet. <laughs> I've seen it around and I've been meaning to pick up a... I feel like a TV series. But this was only like $12. Oh, no, it was $16. So I thought, yeah, fuck it, I'll get it. I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, it came out... I thought it was pretty recent. But I could be wrong. Yeah, 2019, this got released. So, yeah, that's cool. And I, the, the Sheila that plays it, Miss Franny, or Miss Fisher, I should say, um, Essie Davis, she looks familiar. But I, I don't know where I've seen her before. But she looks pretty familiar. She could just have one of those faces. I could have just seen her on this and go, oh, yeah. But, yeah, that's really cool. If you liked sort of movies set in the 20s, and especially since this is set sort of all over too. It's like set in England, um, Jerusalem, a couple other places. <laughs> but yeah, really like this sort of stuff. So it was only $16. So thought I'd get it. Um, been on a, uh, what's her name? Audrey Hepburn kick of late. Because my housemate uh, is a big fan. I know who she is, obviously. I've never seen any of her films, though. I've only seen her films inside other films. So, uh, if that makes sense. <laughs> uh, so, I thought, fuck it. I'm going to get a couple of her films and we're going to watch it. Because I've made my housemate watch some shit movies. <laughs> movies that aren't really her type of thing. So, uh, I thought, I'll, I'll get a couple and we'll watch those, you know. Because you gotta you got to watch something out of your comfort zone. So, I thought, well... I am trying to get into this cinema gold sort of sort of range, and uh, I thought this is a good way to get into it. So I got My Fair Lady. It was only like ten dollars or twelve dollars off eBay. Um, this is a fiftieth anniversary edition. Has Audrey Hepburn, of course, and Rex Harrison. This is a fucking monster of a movie. This goes for three hours, and I've got to say, it was very good. I really enjoyed this movie. Very. Uh, <sighs> It's very controversial um, in today's standards, especially how the men treat the women in this movie. But it is, it's an old film. Like it was made and probably set. Oh, I can't read that, man. I need some light. Anyway, it's <laughs> it's a movie of its time. It's set in a, in a tens. 1910s, I want to say, maybe 1912. Um, so, yeah, it was a fucking... It was a different time back then. And I love the way this was filmed. Oh, it was, it's amazing. There's this, uh, a, a fairly long-ish scene, maybe a 20-minute scene in there, at the races, at like uh, horse races. Really good scene. Fucking great. Uh, and basically, they get this... Uh, she's like a, a beggar-type, homeless-type person that sells flowers on the streets. So, you know, considered a lower class of, the so of society. And a guy, he's like a language expert. He thinks he, he makes a bet with somebody that he can turn her into a lady and, and get her invited to some fancy ball later on in the year. And uh, she goes from, like, rags to riches, basically. And it's a I've seen that sort of story before, but... 
especially on the nanny episode, one of the episodes of the nanny. <laughs> but yeah, this was really good. I had a fucking blast with this movie. It's not going to be for everybody, I think, and especially because it goes for three hours. But I thoroughly enjoyed it and think if you're ever on the fence about checking it out and you got to spare three hours, check it out because it was... Yeah, it was quite a surprise, and it made me get a few more of her films. That um, she's absolutely amazing in this movie. She doesn't do all of her own singing in some of the parts, or in most of the parts, but the accent that she puts on that um, at the start of the film, where he's trying to change that accent, is fucking. Uh, I heard that it was really hard for her to do that, but she did it anyway, and it really good, outstanding. Um. Lots of special features too. Like there is a fucking ton of special features that I'm going to check out one day. But because uh, I was just very interested in how they shot a lot of these scenes in this film. So yeah, very, very good film. A lot of it was unnecessary. Like they didn't need it. If you cut it out of the film, you, you, you'd have exactly the same film. So, you know, it could have been a two hour movie, <laughs> but that's all right. Uh, so I got a few more of her films. I got Sabrina. I have no idea what this is about, but it's got Humphrey Bogart in it. And William Holden. So, Willem Holden. William Holden. Um, so, I had to get it. Because I love Humphrey Bogart. Just look at him. He's just standing. He's just so Humphrey Bogart. Look at him. Um, and, yeah. Now, I'm on an Audrey kick. So, I'll check that out one day. One day soon. I got Roman Holiday. Because, apparently, this was her first movie. I'm not 100% sure. Could be her first movie. Um, yeah. This has Gregory Peck and Audrey Hepburn in it. Haven't watch it yet uh have watched this one though uh the unforgiven it's got burt lancaster and audrey hepburn oh, this is a western movie <laughs> fuck me do they use some language in this movie describing uh indians <laughs> um yeah i don't know what to say about this movie <laughs> it was good i mean her performances uh is unreal her Really, really good performance in this film. It was pretty cool, but again, it's a movie where it's probably going to upset a lot of people today if you watch it today, especially in 2021. Um, but yeah, I'm glad I watched it because it's a really good movie and it's part of that Hollywood Gold series. So um, yeah, definitely <laughs> one to keep an eye out for, especially if you're in the mood for a, a Western that's... It's a Western, like it's a typical Western but with Audrey Hepburn in it. And I just didn't think I'd ever see that. I didn't even know she did a Western type movie. And I'm sure, I I think it's the only one she ever did. But yeah, it was good. It was okay. I don't know if it was, because as I said in previous videos, I'm not a huge Western person. And I don't know if it's a, I'm not sure if it was the best movie to sort of like introduce myself to more Westerns. But, um, you know, I had Audrey Hepburn in it on a kick of hers. So... Yeah, I'm glad I watched it though. It was definitely it was definitely something. <laughs> uh, a couple of more Hollywood Gold series films that I just picked up because I did. <laughs> uh, and they're Dean Martin. Dean Martin? No. Oh yeah, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. But I was thinking of Jerry Lewis. Um, this one's called My Friend Irma. I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis are only like sort of like side characters in this film. I'm not 100% sure, but it was like $13, so yeah, fucking pick this one up. Um, and it's on Blu-ray, so why not? Then I got, I'm guessing a sequel, My Friend Irma Goes West, and I think this is where they play more of a role in this in the movie. So again, $16, why not? Check them out one day. I think they don't go for too long. Yeah, I don't know. These sort of movies, they don't generally go for two... Wow, fuck, that one goes for 102 minutes, and this one goes for 90, so I'll just keep my mouth shut. But, cool ad. Uh, I know this one doesn't go for too long. 87 minutes. I picked this one up for $22 from Dixon's, and it's uh, Lady from Shanghai. The Lady from Shanghai. This is my first indicator release. They do a lot of... Uh, they've got a lot of hammer titles and box sets that I want. Um, like Hammer box sets and Film Noir box sets and I think some Columbia uh, not Columbia, that's the Film Noir some, um, I don't know if they do like Giallo and stuff like that, some Italian horror which I don't mind some Italian horror um, but yeah, it's got Rita Hayworth and Orson Welles in it um, I don't know too much about this movie but I've heard of it but 
I think this is just going to be awesome. It's a cool little set there. Region free, Blu-ray. You don't see indicators. Well, I've never seen an indicator Blu-ray at Dixon's before, so I, I just had to get it. Twenty-two bucks. I didn't buy anything else from there, so I, you know I like to buy something from these little sort of recycled places or secondhand places, uh, little independent sort of um, shops, you know, because they do it hard. So had to get that. Looks really cool. Haven't checked it out yet, but. Get around to it. Uh, I panic. I panicked. Panic bought it. Oh, fucking hell. Can't speak. I panic purchased this. <laughs> Glad I did, though. Um, but I heard it was out of print. Severely out of print. Didn't last too long. Um, but it's the Lucky Stars 3 film collection. I want to start getting... Uh, from Eureka. So it's British. So it'll work over here. But I want to start getting more Jackie Chan films on Blu-ray especially through 88 films, I think. And there's a couple more from Eureka as well. Uh, I just want to upgrade my DVDs because I can move on the DVDs. <laughs> but this is a cool set. It's got a nice, like, weird feeling cover with some sparkly bits in there. Yeah, there you go. Woo. And I didn't realize, I've seen Twinkle Twinkle Lucky Stars before, but I didn't realize that it was like the third one in the, the trilogy. I don't think it's like an official proper trilogy. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know how it works. I think maybe the second two are and not the first one. I don't know. But yeah, this is like 70 bucks. I was like, fuck it. I treat myself. Each on their own individual, individual disc, little booklet there, lots of special features. Yeah, thought I'd get it. These are very uh, controversial in parts as well, so I've been told. <laughs> so, but good martial arts, comedy action, so I had to get it. Um, yeah, I don't think, I mean, I'm sure you can still get this set, but where I got it from, I'm pretty sure they're all sold out now, so. I thought for $70, that's pretty good. It's not bad value for three movies on Blu-ray and a nice little box set. Uh... These ones are all Ooh. umbrella titles. So I'll start off with the DVDs that I got from the off shop. Uh, I got Shine on DVD from Umbrella. This is uh, this was like two dollars. Um, the deep, the I was looking for the Blu-ray, but I w went onto eBay and the fucking people want one hundred and fifty dollars for the Blu-ray of this. I'm like, get fucked. I'm not paying one hundred and fifty dollars for a Blu-ray of a movie that I might never watch. I've seen it before. It's a very good movie. Jeffrey Rush is outstanding in this movie. Um, when it first came out, I was like, who's going to want to watch this movie? <laughs> but uh, since then, I've seen it and, you know, I've, I've got more of an appreciation for uh, cinema. And this is an absolutely fucking classic of a movie. Really good. Going to check this out again, and, you know, at some point. But um, it's a pretty heavy sort of film. So you've got to be in the mood for these sort of movies. But I figured for a for dollar or two dollars, whatever, this would be fine <laughs> instead of the Blu-ray. I have a feeling... Umbrella might even, or hopefully, anyway, that they might re-release this on or re-release the Blu-ray and their new uh, range of, of uh, Sunburnt films or Sunburnt classics or whatever the fuck they call it. But I think it's Sunburnt films. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe not. If they don't, well, at least I've got the DVD there. Uh, I got two Blinky Bill DVDs. I just found them in the off shop. They were a dollar or two each. They're from, um, yeah... The only reason I picked them up is they're, because they're from Umbrella Entertainment. So um, I really like this Blinky Bill cartoon as a kid. I haven't checked these out to see if it holds up. It probably doesn't. But they do... Uh, in some of it, it's cartoon over like live-action backgrounds and stuff like that. So, yeah. That's really cool. If you haven't checked it out, I'm sure there's some clips on YouTube you can check it out for my overseas viewers. But I really like this cartoon as a kid. Come out in the 80s, early 90s. So this one was 93, this one 92. So, yeah. There's a few of those out there. And if I ever see them for a dollar or two each, I'm going to pick them up. Uh, and then some Blu-rays. Some Umbrella Entertainment Blu-rays. I'm still waiting for one in the mail, so I guess I'll show that next month. <laughs> Um, I don't know if I said at the start of this film, this is my pickups for the month of April. There you go. Done. To hell and back. Uh, I don't know what this is. I thought this was a, uh, I thought this was a war film, but I think it's more like of a, it's more like a documentary type film. Um, it says it's the exciting true life story of Audie Murphy playing himself in To Hell and Back. 
Just a kid too young to shave, but old enough to win every medal his country had to give. Uh, it sounds awesome. It sounds really good and definitely something that I need to watch. So I got it $16. Why wouldn't I pick it up? Um, you know, Umbrella Blu-ray didn't have. Going to get it. Uh, this was a new release from them, and I paid full price for it, but I did get it on a deal, buy two, get one free, so let's just say I got it for free. <laughs> um, but this is the last one that they're going to release in this Drive-In Delirium series. So it's like seven hours of, uh, or maybe six hours of, I don't know, seven hours of B-grade movie trailers uh, of all genres. It looks like you've got horror, sci-fi, creature feature, um, action, sword and sorcery, thriller. There's a bit of everything in there. Um, they've got no more trailers they can put on, on the discs. <laughs> so I think there's like six or seven of these volumes, or maybe five, I'm not 100%. I've got three already. I don't know why I'm looking over there. They're not there. Um, so they call this one The Final Conflict. So there's seven hours and then another two hours of... SD, so standard definition trailers. The Curse of VHS Dilemma. <laughs> a lot. I watched one. Um, I've only watched one so far. And I was like, it was daylight when I started it. And it was fucking pitch black by the time I finished. And I was like, what the fuck? It's 11 o'clock at night. How long does it go? For six hours? And this one goes for longer. <sighs> so it's definitely... And I watched it straight too. Just was engrossed in all the different trailers. So I'll get around to watching that one one day. But it's a big ask, man. Uh, I was talking to my buddy Liam. He tells me that this is an amazing movie to, to watch and it's a John Carpenter film I haven't seen. And it just so happened that Umbrella Entertainment did a release of it. So I picked this up. I think I paid $30 for it. Um, but it's the Assault on Precinct, Precinct 13. So I've, I've heard about it. I know exactly what the movie's about. Uh, I've just never seen it. So I know there is a remake as well. So um, yeah, can you check this one out eventually? I got the... Last, well, I do have another one coming, but <laughs> I got the uh, Beyond Genres that I didn't have because they were out of stock, and that's Bad Boy Bubby. Uh, this is a really odd, bizarre fucking Australian film. It's just crazy. There's some weird shit in this movie. Um, I'm so glad this got a re-release because they do have a release of this already, and apparently this one is much better. And that other release is just severely out of print and well overpriced so to get this um 24.98 much much better it's part of that beyond genre slip cover you know fancy i don't think i can show any of the artwork on here for some reason because i hear it's quite uh not youtube friendly <laughs> but yeah uh, i saw that oh, fuck i watched that movie i want to say 94 or 95 when did this come out uh it doesn't say it does or i can't see it um, but yeah, I want to say it was like 94 or 95 when I watched this movie on VHS. The video rental place actually let me rent it for some reason. <laughs> so, okay. Um, yeah, I haven't watched it yet since watching it as a kid, but yeah, I'll get around to it. Um, I got Death Ship. Yeah, this was like $11. I was been hunting down uh, a copy of this for a long time, but... It was always like thirty, forty, fifty dollars. I'm not paying that much, you know. I draw the line at thirty dollars for an X rent or for a second hand copy of Salt on Preset thirteen, but I wasn't paying over that for this. So I didn't know what I was getting, but um yeah, I ended up finding a copy for eleven. So I was like, fuck yeah, snabbled that right up. Um yeah, it's just a horror on a ship, on a ghost ship type thing. Pretty cool generic cover. Um yeah, haven't checked it out yet, but one day. <laughs> Uh, I got this one because um, YouTube Horror or Horace YouTube or High Horror, I'm, I'm tubing or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> a fellow Aussie uh, YouTuber uh, picked this up and I thought I had it in my collection. I was like, oh yeah, I've got that. And I went to have a look and I couldn't find it. So I'm guessing I didn't have it. And that's the house that Jack built. Apparently it's pretty messed up. There's some fucked up bits in this. And um, I like Irma Thurman and I like Matt Dillon. So... I don't know any of the other characters, but um, yeah, apparently it's pretty messed up, but 
it sounds right up my alley. So set in the 1970s in America. Um, yeah, killer a killer stalks the streets. So serial killer type, messed up in your face, R-rated film. <laughs> uh, and then, then the last Umbrella Entertainment Blu-ray release that I got, Sunday Too Far Away. This is part of that new Sunburnt Screens. That's what I was trying to say. Sunburnt Screens. So they're releasing um, just sort of like lesser known, at least lesser known to me, Australian movies that have not seen the light of day in terms of being on Blu-ray. I, I believe that they haven't been on Blu-ray before. Um, they have another one called We of the Never Never, which I had the VHS tape, uh, never watched it. So I'm, I've got to hunt that one down because it was quite popular. Um, but this is just, it's about a guy that uh, he shears sheep and he goes away and he comes back and he's not as good as what he used to be or some shit. I'm not 100%. This is a typical Australian movie set in the 70s. So I'm keen to check it out because, you know, I've been watching a bit of Australian cinema lately and um, it's not something that I've ever seen. So looking forward to checking that out. Um, but I'm going to watch them in order. Doesn't matter, but, but I'm going to watch him in order. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I've been going 4K crazy lately. Um, I don't know. I just... I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to go 4K crazy again. I'm just going to keep buying 4Ks. Um, but I got... I fucking love this movie. I've got the Blu-ray, but I had to upgrade to 4K because I think this will look absolutely amazing. This is Kingsglaive. This is based on the Final Fantasy XV movie. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, video game. This is set just before the video game. So you've got like, um, I think the end of this film leads into the start of the game. If you've ever played the game, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I fucking love the game. It's my favorite Final Fantasy game. I don't know what it is about it, but it just, I've played over 200 hours of that game in two sittings, like in two different save saves and over two different consoles and i just fucking love that and i'm gonna go back again and play it again but this is really really good so action-packed epic um fight scenes and crazy giant sort of like monsters and stuff like that i think it's gonna look phenomenal in 4k the only reason i'm picking up a lot of these 4ks is because i just want to see what they look like basically um and they're movies that you know i should have in the collection anyway so yeah kingsglaive uh from final fantasy 15 I only just come out too. I only just got released. I uh, got this one, Overlord. Oh yeah, I don't know anything about it. Just it's like a crazy sort of monster action type Nazi thing. <laughs> I don't know. Might not be Nazi. I don't know. Um, but it's sort of like apparently in the vein of um, Iron Sky, and I fucking love those movies. I haven't seen the second one yet, but I, I know I'm gonna love it. Love the first one. But yeah, this just seems really cool. And I thought, well, it was part of a deal. So um, yeah, might as well get it on 4K. I think this, the Blu-ray was 35 for some reason. The 4K was was cheaper. So uh, I got these ones from a porn store and I didn't pay what the prices say. So don't worry. Didn't pay 19 for this. I think I paid 14 for this once upon a time in Hollywood. Haven't seen it. Thought I'd just get it for $14. That's a pretty good price. Um... I think I paid 12 for this one, 12 or 11 for this one, Scarface. Never seen this movie, so I thought, well, i got to get it. So I might as well get the, for $12, I might as well pick up the 4K, see what it looks like, and enjoy it as well. Because it's this one that I, I think it's something that everybody needs to watch. This is a gold edition, I don't know what the difference is. Perhaps it's the um, di different scenes in it or something, I don't know. I went in there to the pawn shop originally just to get this one because I couldn't get it from any of the um, JB Hi-Fi's. It was only ten dollars. It was twelve. Had twelve dollars on there, uh, but she only charged me ten. And that's Superman the movie, the first one with Christopher Reeves. I just wanted to see what it looks like on Blu-ray. That's all I wanted to do. And for tw for ten dollars, I was like happy to, yeah, pay it and check it out. <laughs> Uh, these older films look fantastic on, on 4K. I'm sure it looks good on Blu-ray. I've only ever watched it on DVD and VHS. So I've never seen a like a, a 1080p release of this film. Um, I used to own it, but I've never watched it. So keen to check this one out on 4K. I think it's going to look absolutely amazing. 
Uh, and then this one was only five dollars, so I picked it up. Mad Max Fury Road. I wasn't a huge fan of this movie. I did see it at the cinema back when it came out. Um, I wish it had a, had the the black and white version of this movie. It might. I'm not sure. I don't think it does, but um, it should look good on 4K. It's got the HDR. I've got. Um, I'm assuming it's got Dolby Atmos. Yep. Uh, I've got the Dolby Atmos set up, so it should look and sound amazing. So keen to... Uh, I'll give it another watch. I've only watched it the once, so I'll give it another watch, especially now in 4K. And for $5, why not? Uh, and then I got Labyrinth on 4K. I've owned this before and then got rid of it, but then I got now I've got it back. <laughs> um, my housemate's never seen this movie, and it's the absolute travesty. Travesty that she hasn't seen this film. So... I got this one to show her, and I, I wanted it in the collection anyway. Doesn't look very good on 4K, unfortunately. You could probably just get away with the Blu-ray, but it was cheap. It was it wasn't 25 bucks, that's for sure. It was like uh, it was 16.98 or something like that. So yeah, really, yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, I got to get the Dark Crystal at one point, at some point as well, but that's alright. Uh, and then lastly, I was uh, a song came on my phone called Braveheart. I can't remember who sings it. So I got Braveheart on 4K. I think this will look pretty good. I haven't seen this movie for the longest time. Again, it's HDR, probably Dolby Atmos. Yep. Um, and it was only... Oh, yeah, 25 bucks. That's not too bad. Uh, I saw this only once. I've only seen it in full once. And we watched it in health class back in 2000 and might have been just 2000, back in high school, 2000, um, which was really weird. So we watched this and we watched Shawshank Redemption and Dead Poet Society in health. We're supposed to be talking about sex, you know? <laughs> but <laughs> um, yeah, we, we watched Braveheart instead. Now, and that was part of the curricula. Like it was, it wasn't like she just chucked it on. The teacher just chucked it on. It was like, no, we, we had to discuss it and write shit about it. It was fucking weird. But anyway, uh, Amazing film. I absolutely fucking loved it. And I don't know why I've never had a copy of this since then. But, yeah. Braveheart. <laughs> Should look pretty good on 4K. So, I'm going to be buying a lot of 4Ks just because. Um, I, it's not last. I got three more. And I got these from Amazon. Because these don't have a license in Australia to be released here on 4K. So, I got Gremlins. Which I did watch. And it is fucking amazing. The Goonies, which I haven't watched yet, and Beetlejuice. Beetlegeist. Uh, yeah, I'd, I only wanted this one, but then Amazon recommended, like, oh, normally all the cool people buy these two uh, movies as well. Do you want to add them to your cart and be cool like them? And I was like, you know what? I want to be cool like them, and I got all three. So it cost me, like, uh, I think maybe $90 for, th for three. No, that can't be right. Although maybe it is, maybe it was like ninety or eighty dollars or something like that. But I don't care. You can't get these here in Australia. I got the slip covers. Oh, look. Oh, it's the same. But I'm not going to rip it up. <laughs> and uh, look at these two. Oh, come out. Oh yeah. I got the awesome slip covers. I paid an extra twenty dollars per disc just to get the slip covers. They look the same as these. But I'm not going to rip them. I'm, I'm, I, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I just don't get these slip covers, man. I'd, I always said I was going to rip them up if I ever got them. But now that they're there and they're on the discs, like they're on the cases, you know, they can stay there. It's fine. <laughs> um, that's everything. Thank you for watching, guys. Let me know in the comment section down below if there's anything there that you've seen. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, recommend me something to watch that's not something that I've shown here. And maybe I'll watch that instead, but I probably won't. But yeah, let's have a discussion in the comment section. Um, fuck me, this is a long video.